Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. If you'd like to get my help personally, click on the link in the description below or go to my website, AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about when your ex doesn't respond to your texts. So every day I talk to men and women who lose emotional self-control and they absolutely lose it when their ex won't respond to their text message. So this video I'm going to be talking to you guys about that. And I really want to explain that you have to have discipline during a breakup. I give you very strict guidelines and instructions especially when you're working on with me one-on-one -on -one and I'm looking at your individual scenario and we cater a plan to you. If you deviate from that plan, you cannot get upset if it doesn't work out because I, I know what I'm talking about. I look at a lot of different factors for you guys. You really have to have discipline and that's so difficult when you're anxious because it lo uh, causes us to lose emotional self-control. So I've got an email here that I thought would be helpful for you guys and I'm just going to go ahead and get into it and share my thoughts as I go through it. The email here is from Maurice who uh, is going through the exact situation. He said, Hi Craig, absolutely brilliant channel. I am hooked and you have been trem tremendously helpful. I wanted to share my situation. My ex and I broke up about three weeks ago. Of course, I begged her to work it out and it only seemed to turn her off. I tried calling her sister and getting information, which worked for a few days. After that, my ex told me not to contact her sister anymore because it was only making her mad. Yeah, I've done that before. <laughs> I did that with uh, the one ex that... Um, you know, that the little girl that I've talked about, I was, because the family absolutely loved me, you know, and so they were just devastated about the, the breakup. I mean, it was just, it came from out of nowhere for everybody, and so the entire family was just, like, distraught and devastated, and my ex was furious because her family was, like, all on my side, and they were all wanted her to work it out with me, and so I was trying to get, you know, help from the family and wound up pissing off my ex. Which I guess in hindsight I can understand. But when you're going through it, it seems like a good idea. So he says, I felt like I was dying inside. I am sick to my stomach. I can't eat. I can't sleep. And every waking moment, I cannot stop thinking about her. Every day feels like an eternity. Yeah, I get that a lot. I've been through that. I know that. It's like, you don't hear from them, and every moment you just feel like you're just being tortured. You absolutely obsess of them, over them. And, you know, it's because we're feeling the same pain and anxiety that we would have felt if we lost our parents when we were younger. And for those of us who have an insecure attachment style, and this happened with our caregivers, it's even more painful because we've had that trauma before, we've had that abandonment before, and so that trauma, all those feelings, all those symptoms come out with this current breakup. So a lot of the issues that we're actually going through in the breakup are mirroring the pain that we've had in our childhood. So important to understand that. So, the other thing is that the trauma and the anxiety causes our body to release chemicals and they are stress inducing. So our body is under this stress and tension and our mind just keeping telling us, you know, it's like, go find your parents. You're going to die without them. You have to find your parents. 
Only, it's those same feelings, those same demands on us to reconnect with our partner, our romantic partner. Um, it's so important just to understand that our body is saying, you are in danger. This is crisis. This is the meltdown. This is it. You have got to go find this person or you're going to die. That's how uh, we're wired. We're wired to connect. So let me go on with the email. He was saying, I, I was trying so hard to figure out what to do. I kept thinking of all the things I could do to win her back. I decided I had come up with a plan. I was going to text her and then take her to a concert coming in town that I knew she would want to go to. So he's going to try the grand gesture. Um, you know, the thing is, guys, if somebody doesn't want to be with you, doing something nice for them does not change that. In fact, it kind of turns them off. You need to try and take a step back for a moment and put yourself in their situation. I want you to try and think of a time where somebody liked you that you had no interest in for whatever reason. Even if they had done something nice for you at that time, you wouldn't have started to like them. As a matter of fact, you would have been kind of turned off by them. It's so interesting. Human behavior is so fascinating because a lot of the things are counterintuitive. I'm going to go off the rails for a minute here and share a story that I remember reading years ago about Benjamin Franklin. And he was having, uh, I guess, an issue with somebody who was a fairly famous person during his time. Obviously not too famous because we remember Ben. But here's what he did. He, he knew that this guy didn't like him. Maybe it was like a politician or something. So he thought to himself, what can I do to get this guy to like me and get him on my side? So did he do something nice for him? No. As a matter of fact, he did the exact opposite. Right? What did he do? He asked this guy to lend him a very valuable and rare book. And the guy who didn't like Benjamin said, okay. And he did. And he lent it to him. And you know what happened? His mind started to change. And he himself thought, well, you know what? I must really like this guy to lend him that book. And then he started to like the guy. Interesting, isn't it? When he got the guy to do something nice for him, that's when the guy started to like him. Not the other way around. We think that if we can get them to do the grand gesture, that that would get them to like us again because we're doing something nice. But in actuality, it would be more effective, it seems, if we could get them to do something nice for us. But that's a topic for another video. <laughs> this video is about dealing with when they don't contact you or they won't text you back. So this guy has a plan. I'm going to take her to this concert. We'll have a great time. She'll love me again. So what did he do? He decided I was going to text her, hi beautiful. And when she responded, ask her to the concert. So after about two weeks of no contacted, or no, no contact, I texted her. I sat patiently waiting for hours. Nothing. I thought, she'll text me in the morning. Nothing. Two days later, she responded. I told you, I need space. I lost it. I started crying. I was sick to my stomach. I couldn't believe it. So, if you could see what's going on here and you take a step back, this is something that I actually talk about. The two biggest fears in a relationship. Fear of abandonment 
and fear of being smothered. We have both people experiencing those fears right now. He's feeling abandoned. His anxiety alarms are going off like crazy. His body's releasing chemicals, causing him physical stress. The trauma and the pain of abandonment from his early childhood are reactivated. And he is scared and it is intense just like he was when he was a kid. Now she, on the other hand, is feeling trapped. She's feeling engulfed, smothered, and every time he reaches out, it just causes her to want to push and run away even more. He said, I thought if I just tell her why I was texting her, she would want to go. So I texted her again. <clears throat> We've, we've been there, right? A lot of us may be going through this right now. I know I've been there. But it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work like that. So we reached out again. And what happens? His value lowers in her eyes. She loses more respect for him. He appears desperate, weak, insecure. And what's, what's going to happen? Her attraction level drops. Where, at one time, her heart would have skipped a beat to see a text message from him. Now she only feels irritated and annoyed. So, he goes on to say, I told her that I got us tickets to the concert. <sighs> the grand gesture. And what happens? She didn't even reply. Now I feel even worse than two weeks of no contact. It obviously made it worse. I totally see why you say we have to wait until they reach out to you. Yes. Guys, you ain't going to be rejected if you're waiting to hear from them. They definitely want to talk to you if they reach out. You can't go wrong if they're coming to you. But you're taking a big risk and you're making them feel more trapped by going to them when they're telling you they need space. So, here's some other things to keep in mind. If you acted like you were a catch, how would you act? Think about that. Would you chase her or do nice things to bribe her for attention? Of course not. You would be confident and secure and know that you're her best option. You would know that she's going to come back to you at some point because she'd be crazy not to. But you have insecurity that stems from your first two to three years of life with your caregivers. You felt abandoned. Maybe you were abandoned. And you internalized it. And this is what kids do. If somebody abandons them or leaves them, they think that it's their fault. That they're unlov unlovable. And so that's what you probably did. You thought you weren't good enough. And now you think you're still not good enough. That simply isn't the case. That's not true with your parents and it's not true with your romantic partners. And just because your parents didn't know how to give you unconditional love doesn't mean it was a reflection of you. It's not that you weren't unlovable. And you really need to take a hard look at that because if you could love yourself and realize that you're perfect even with your imperfections, you can start to feel more confident and secure in who you are and know that you are lovable. Chances are you're constantly afraid that you're not good enough. And because you believe that, you act like it. And when you act like it, she starts to believe it too. To get my help personally, go to my website, AskCraig.net. Right in the center of the page, you can schedule a coaching. I do email coaching. I do Skype coaching. Whichever option works best for you. 
If you liked the video, make sure you put a like on there. And be sure to subscribe to the channel because I do post videos Monday through Friday. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and I will talk with you soon.